is my review of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Okay, so this episode marks the finale of part four, um, and it's the episode where Yoshikai Akira is finally done in, but not in the way you would think. So, so it starts off with Yoshikai Akira being cornered by all the by all the good guys, um, and Hayato then proceeds to perfect proceeds to profess that um Yoshikai Akira isn't going to be able to escape the heart of justice that surrounded him, um, and Yoshikai Akira real quickly realizes that he's been cornered, but remarks that he does that he there's no possible way he could be cornered because as he point as he points out um he's he doesn't feel he doesn't feel like it, he could possibly be cornered um but basically long story short he thinks that he he can still get escape um and but as but and remarks it as some sort of sick dream um and refuses to be to be cornered um but and and, and shortly after he succumbs to his wounds and start and collapses on in on himself um, and a paramedic actually come comes up to actually meet him to actually co go and see what's wrong with him. Um, and she and at which point Hayato t tells everybody not that he that he needs to be kept away from that woman at all costs. Um, and as it turns out, we find out shortly after why. Um, because he uses because he then uses Killer Queen. He uses his own hand to touch her hands, and basically and basically which enables him to activate Killer Queen's ability. Um, and while and while and while Jos Josuke and the others quickly point out that they need that they quickly realize they need to stop um Yoshikage here because they think he's going to take a hostage as a last ditch effort um Hayato quickly explains what it actually is um and the, and and sh and also Jojo remarks that he should probably that he should stop time and 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 everybody else confirms that but. Jo but Jojo himself explains that there is a that there is indeed a range a range limit regarding where time can be stopped, and that while and that while he can stop time theoretically for everybody within his ring theoretically for everybody he it only works if they're within five five meters and even then he can only stop time within five meters and it's apparently and apparently the the speed at which time is stopped is relative to how long it takes for time to stop um but and and but in any case they keep. But in case, um, once Jojo realizes he's too far away, um, Hayato, th Hayato then proceeds to explain that, um, Yoshikage here actually does have a third ability, Bites the Dust, which we find out how it actually works in this episode, because we didn't actually, we didn't actually get to see it because it happened off screen, but, uh, in this episode, we actually find out how it works. Um, it, it, as it turns out, in order for, for it to be activated, not only does Bites the Dust have to touch a non-stand user, but it also has to... But Yoshikai here also has to profess his, his secrets to the person that he wants to turn into a bomb. And turn and you, in order to rewind time. And that's exactly what he does, and he's not exactly subtle about it. He makes some very creepy remarks to the to the woman who's trying to help him. And then also explains where he actually picked up his hand fetish. As it turns out, um... Uh, he, he while he was at the at the Morial Library, he actually saw a picture a picture of the Mona Lisa, fell in love with her hands, and then and then that proceeded to be his a character trait for him. He just realized that he likes hands, but not the rest of the human body, and that he's and that he and that he for the most part just likes collecting women's hands, and that she but and that this paramedic is the first person he's told his secrets to before kill before killing her. Um, at which point he proceeds to activate, to go into activate Bites the Dust and is about to press the detonator. At which point Jojo realizes he needs to make his move and actually run in to try and stop him. Um, but, but, um, Jojo turns out to be too late and, um, Yoshikage here is able to, to stop time and rewind time. Um, or at least he thinks he does. So it starts, so it starts off with Yoshikage here re thinking he's rewound time. Um, he, it's, uh, there's a big animated sequence where, where he goes, where he goes back through a time loop and thinks that he's actually done it. Um, I just, um, but he, but as it turns out, no. Um, after, as he's, as he's gloating over his final victory over the Joestar group, um, some birds fly through him. And he, and he, at which point he, it starts to dawn on him that something is wrong. Um, and realize, and Pumpa points out that he, that it doesn't really look like the way it should, he should actually be going to work. And in turn, as it turns out, he's not. As it turns out, he's actually in Ghost Girl's Alley and just doesn't realize it yet. Um, and confused as to whether or not he actually managed to stop time, he proceeds to pull out his watch and point, and, but realizes that, um, it was the watch that, um, 
screwed that high till it broken, but knows that the hot, but knows that that should be impossible because if he had rewind re rewound time, he sh it should have repaired itself as well because that didn't happen yet. Um, but as but as it turns out, but as it turns out, um, he he did he doesn't quite realize he's dead, and and that at which point he's confronted by Remy Sugimoto who basically confirms this that he doesn't realize he's he's quite yet dead. Um, and Yoshika and Kira is com completely confused because he, uh, one, he doesn't remember who Remy Sugimoto is, and two, um, he doesn't really know, he doesn't really know what she, why she's there. Um, but, uh, Re but in any case, Re but in any case, Remy does confront him, conf pointing out that, um, he does, that he, that he cl clearly doesn't remember her because it's been 15 years, but she wasn't, but remarks that she, she has absolute proof that he's dead, and then proceeds to put her hand through his, through his shoulder, revealing the cold, the cold, dark soul of a killer, um, as she puts it. Um, at which point, at which point, um, she remarks that if Yoshikai here remembers how he died now, um, and as it turns out, he does, and we get a flashback sequence. Um, as it turns out, um, he wasn't actually able to stop by stop time like he thinks he did. He it was just that he was so he was so traumatic that he uh, that he blocked it out of his memory and only thinks he stopped time. So, or, and thinks he rewound time with Bites of Dust, but, um, as it turns out, he did not, because Quinchy was able to stop him, to stop him with three freeze before he could actually press the detonator on his hand, um, and, dis but despite the weight difference, the, the increased weight difference on his, on his right hand, he still tries to press the button on, on, um, Killer Queen, Killer Queen's detonator, um, but um, killer. But um, jo but by that point, Jotaro was able to actually get within range and actually is able to stop time, and then proceeds to break his hand so he can't press the button, and then proceed and then proceeds to send him flying several feet with a with Star Platinum. So he so he's knocked to so he's knocked to se of se several differences away, and nobody notices because Star Platinum again can stop time. But uh, in within the stop time, he's able to actually disable Yoshikage here and stop him from actually using activating bites of dust again and kill and kill potentially killing everybody who knows his secret now because they're literally everybody except that one paramedic would have died if he if jojo hadn't do, done that but yoshikai here determined till the end just uh, decides to push the button with his one good hand um which rohan ultimately remarks is kind of admirable despite knowing that that they're not supposed to like him so yeah, so yeah, he can't, he can't help, but, so yeah, but despite being his enemy, Ro can't, Rohan can't help but admire Kira's dedication to actually trying to act, to use his abilities to escape into, into the rewound time. Um, but, as Yoshika Kira makes a big, makes a big play to try and press the button, um, he dies tragically. So, as it turns out, he isn't killed by a stand user. Um, he's killed when a, when an, when an ambulance that, when the ambulance that was supposed to come and pick him up accidentally runs him over because they couldn't see where he was. Um, and so he dies that way. Um, which is, tra which is tragic and a little bit anticlimactic and it kind of works because as every, as everybody explains shortly after he dies and also because everybody now know, now, because that one paramedic now knows his identity and all of the things he's done, um... He, he can't be put to ju they, they as the hero's remark he can't actually be put to justice because of what happened um mainly because there's no evidence to convict because he used his stand to kill almost exclusively everybody that he killed um but he, but because but because he got run over at the very at the very least now they know he kind of got got what was coming to him even if they he wasn't able to actually be punished for his crimes um and Hayato even remarks that that he didn't get along with his dad, but even then he would have liked to have seen his father's killer see see justice. So he was, and so with that he's a little bit upset and disappointed that that didn't happen. Um, but as it turns, but it turns out, um, Hayato actually indeed got his wish because, um, because after realizing after um realizing how he died, um, Kira then proceeds to confront Rami Sugimoto and ask her who the hell she is and why she and why she knows all this. Um, at which point, Remy reveal de decides to re-explain re to Yoshika Akira, because apparently he doesn't remember, um, that, that she was indeed his first victim before he had a stand, and asks him if he knows his, if he remembers the wound he gave her, and also if it, it and also if she, if the reason she, he doesn't remember her is because she didn't have any, mem any, she didn't, he never collected her hand, which means that he didn't think of her as very memorable to keep, as a keepsake, so... So obviously she's a little bit she's fine she's a little bitter 
that he did that not only does he think so they did not think so so highly of her but that uh or at least not highly enough as a, as far as a killer slash victim relationship goes but uh but she's clearly offended that not only did he kill her but doesn't even remember her at all so at which point Yoshikai here then proceeds to confront go to confront her but then realizes but then stops himself and quickly realizes that um Remy is just trying to get him to turn around. As it turns out, um Yoshihiro Kira at some point in the at some point between now and when we when we a long time ago before he died, um at some point Yoshihiro Kira reveal explains that um that the, what that you're not supposed to turn around in Ghost Girl Alley because the goat the, because the hands will rip you apart. Um and and it's clear because Yoshikage Kira clearly knows this and is trying to get and realizing that Remy is going to be is trying to get him to turn around and instead just decides to turn the tables on her, grab her and try to make her turn around. Only for Remy to reveal that that's exactly what she what she was planning for and was planning for this eventuality, pointing out that she had been that she had been waiting for 15 years for him to show up and didn't think that and that Kira should have expected that they would be prepared for him. Um, at which point, at which point, Kira notices that she said they, and then Arnold comes out and bites his hand off, and he turn, and he winds up turning around into the alley, and tumble, and basically tumbles back first in, in, into the hands of Ghost Girl's alley, which proceeds to rip him apart. And Yoshigaki Kira can't even defend himself because, as we've as it was established when it was first introduced, it can also disable a stand and rip it apart as well. So when he tries to defend himself with Killer Queen, um, Killer Queen is ripped apart, and then he is, starts to join it so, shortly after. Um, and when and when Yoshigaki Kira we can proceed to ask Remy what's going to happen to him, he, she merely remarks that she has no idea what's going to happen to him or where he's going to go, but that she hopes that he'll be punished for for his crimes when, wherever he does wind up. And with that, he's then ripped apart by the hands of Ghost Girls Alley and presumably dragged into hell. Although, as we've established in a previous episode, nobody's quite sure if heaven or hell exists. So, may, so he may have been sent to hell. He may not have. We don't. That that's not very conclusive. But uh, in any case, after now that Yoshikage here has finally gotten his just desserts, she, um, Raimi and Arnold decide that it's time for them to actually head out, head out, as it were, and decide and decide that it's time for them to finally part part for heaven um and Ro and rohan and koichi decide to decide to see her off after finding out she's going to leave um and and while well, koichi re remarks sadness that she's leaving and even asks her if she could stay a little bit longer she remarks that she doesn't really have any other business in moria and that she and that it's better if she just leaves but then tells her but then says that she's gonna that she's going to miss them both and even so, so, says that to Rohan, asks Rohan if she if he's actually going to miss her at all, or if it's or if he's going to be indifferent because it happened 15 years ago. And while Rohan completely pulls a bluff, claiming that he that he's not going to cry for her at all, um, after some very adamant adamant angry staring from Koichi, he eventually decides to confess his true feelings and reveal that he's absolutely going to miss her because she was his childhood friend. Of course, he's and and he never really got to know her, so of course he's going to. He's going to wind up missing her a whole bunch, um, um, but as he, but as um she's but as Remy is about to part part for the afterlife, um, all the other all the other allied stand users actually show up to see her off, um, pointing out that she is a that that, she, that her sacrifice is that was actually very noble, and that her and that her ability to finally bring down her killer was is a very honorable thing, and that she, and and Joseph even remarks that she has grown to be a fun, that she was it was a fine young woman, and he's glad to have met her. Um, at which point, Raimi proceeds to cry, and her tear winds up being the... And, okay, so there's a little bit of, re of magic realism here, but the tear, but basically she cries, and the tear becomes the portal to the afterlife, and she just kind of begins to float off into, into the afterlife, and then proceeds to thank everybody for, for helping her finally bring down her killer, that it was a, pointing out that it was a group effort, and that she, and that she was just the final person to finish him off. Um... And points out and points out that she'll miss them that she'll miss them all and wishes them all good good luck in their lives. Um, at which point she then she and Arnold then proceed to depart what depart and move on with move on into the afterlife. Um, at which point and which point um at which point it be it night then proceeds to fall on Morio and um Shinobu kind of, apparently Kaito never real never d decided it would be best not to tell Shinobu that her husband was killed and replaced by a serial killer. Um, because she only remarks that she, that that her husband isn't apparently isn't home yet, and that she won't eat 
that she's not good that Hayato can eat since she's going to wait until their father until dad gets home um but he but instead of but instead and instead of telling her the truth he then proceeds to scru he then proceeds to cry and remark that and remark that he'll wait for dad to come home as well um which is a very sad moment because obviously dad's never coming home so yeah shinobu just kind of spends the, the rest of her the rest of her days waiting for a husband to come home when he's never going to come home so yeah he's kind of just so yeah she's kind of just spends the rest of her days waiting for somebody who's never coming home um it's kind of it's really sad if you think about it it's just that obviously Hayato was trying to spare her spare her feelings and make sure that nobody that she didn't know her husband had been had been killed and replaced um and and obviously it makes sense that he would do that because he doesn't want her to grieve a serial killer um or anything or anything re remotely along those lines but uh it's just kind of sad that she never really finds out the truth about her husband and then and this is just kind of how her story ends um we never see her again after this she just kind of disappeared she just kind of, she just kind of is spent left spends the rest of her life wondering what happened to her husband um but in case I, but in case as that as but in case as um just gay explains in a narration um um as it as it turns out she's not the only one to feel this way because um as he points out yoshikage hero but being born by the city born by the city and created by the city into a stand you to become a stand user had left a deep wound on the community of morio for 15 years and that that's probably never going to go away um shinobu is just one example but there were countless vi he had countless victims over the over the many 15 years he killed 28 people in the 15 years he he was active so yeah, there are a lot of mourning. There are a lot of mourning families in Demoria that are going to wait for their for their loved ones to come home, and they never are. So, and Josuke and Josuke ultimately wonders if that if they're ever going to be able to move on and forget and forget and move on with their lives and ever be able to heal from that sadness because obviously, obviously, all of their loved ones are dead, but they're registered and missing as missing people because of how Yoshikage Hero's ability worked. So. Obviously nobody, so obviously nobody knows that their loved ones are dead. Ex and Shigechi is the kind of maybe the sole exception because all of his all of his friends know he's dead, but nobody's able to actually say anything. So yeah, everybody can mourn, Sh mourn Shigechi, but every everybody else, um, everybody else, if they they don't know that their loved one is gone. So what are they gonna do? What are, that's how are they going to recover from that? Um, and Jukesuke even remarks remarks that as well, wondering if it if it will heal or just continue to deepen. Um. But in case, but in case, Jotaro and Joseph then proceed to part ways from Morio, getting back on the boat that they came on, um, and jo and jo Joseph then proceeds to ask if it, ask um, Jotaro if, it, if he feels it's okay to actually leave Morio, um, and Jotaro points out that he that that he realizes that they that they've done their business and that they can, that they should probably shouldn't stay around for much longer since they since they don't really need to be there any longer than they have to be. Um, but wonders if the town will be will continue to be safe e even after they're gone. Um, and Joseph merely re merely responds to that that he feels that there's a lot of, gr of great people living in Morio, a lot of different stand users, all with a all with the golden heart of justice living in the town, including his son, who's who he remarks is he's very much proud of. And that as long as they continue to have that golden heart of pe to have that golden heart, that they'll never be that they'll never actually be able to. Um, that nobody is ever going to actually be able to um, harm the city of Morio again because there's going to be so many different protectors keep looking at, looking after it and keeping it safe. Um, but as jo but as he but if, shortly after he finishes that speech, um, Josuke actually runs up and decides to say one last goodbye to his dad, um, tell, asking jo tell, asking Joseph if he actually remembered remember the picture that he gave that he gave of his mom. And Joseph Joseph remembers point remembers pointing out that he had actually slipped it into his into his wallet and that he will keep it and that he, will, he will basically keep it forever and wishes and wishes Joseph um Joseph's mother the best. Um, however, as it turns out, this wasn't supposed to be this lighthearted sappy th this, this lighthearted sappy thing because Joseph decides to pull one last prank on his dad, which is that. Um, it, apparently he he's tore off a piece of the of the um picture that that um Joseph had slipped into his wallet and uses and then proceeds to use Crazy Diamond to steal his wallet, pointing out that every dad should give their their son an allowance. And while and while jo Joseph is uh, understandably pretty annoyed and pretty pissed at his at his son for doing that, um, and Jotaro even remarking if he wants to actually take back what he said about his son, um. 
And Joseph merely reinfer reaffirms what he said, and that he's and that he'll still continue to be proud of his son, and that and tells him to and then hollers after him to take care of himself. Um, it's it's a really funny scene, but also a really touching one because Joseph is just Joseph is just like, hey, we don't we don't really. It's just as like, hey, I, all all of these people have great have great loving, touching touching hearts, but and then jo and then Joseph immediately undermines that statement by stealing his wallet and using his stand, which is funny as hell. Um. And you, you can't really get to any more just juxtaposed than that. It's just really funny. Um, but in any case, after but in any case, after everybody parts ways, um, they also take take Shizuka with her with them, pointing out that they never actually did find her mother, and so Shizuka is ultimately adopted by Joseph and starts going by Shizuka Joestar. Um, so yeah, to, so yeah, Joseph never actually does find Shizuka's mother, but so Shizuka just winds up being um being jo being Joseph's new adopted daughter, which. As we've established with Josuke earlier in part in the part, um, his wife probably ain't gonna be too happy about that that he brought another child home. Um, or at least, or at least if he didn't explain it right, he's probably going to get a lot of hate. Um, and for an understandable reason, he cheated on her once. So if he did, if he did it again, that would be kind of that would kind of ruin their marriage marriage forever. So yeah, hopefully Susie Q doesn't beat his ass when he gets home. Um. But in, but in case of that, but in case it then proceeds to show one final montage of all of all the people of Morio going about their lives, with um, Kochi ultimately remarking that it was a that it was a, that it was a quiet summer that if and that if you didn't know any better, you would remark that it was a quiet summer of in 1999 because the only people who were really involved were the stand users who and nobody really knew and nobody really knew anything about um what, what happened with Yoshikage here other than that what was broadcast in the in his obituary in the news later that later that week. Um, but in, in any case, but in any case, yeah, the, the, ser the series then ends on a montage of all the people going about their lives. Um, Koichi, Koichi and Yukiko continue to see each other. They continue to be a happy, happy loving couple. Um, Akiyasu takes his dad to, uh, takes his dad and also Stray Cat, who they seemingly have adopted, to, um, to, to Tonio Totori's restaurant to, in an effort, in, 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 long story short, the main reason Okiyasu brought him there is to kind of give him a, try, try, try and create a last ditch effort, um, to actually heal his dad, which doesn't work. So, um, all it does is make it, is, fi is fix what was already there. So, in short, um, Okiyasu's dad continues to remain a gross monster thing. Um, which is, which he seems to, which he doesn't seem to mind much anymore, but, and seems to be happy that he's just able to spend time with his son again, but, um, yeah, Okuyasu was good, just kind of hoping that his dad would be fixed, which didn't work. And also, and also, um, y Yuya Fangami actually brought his groupies there to actually show them, to actually show them the healing properties of the, of the restaurant firsthand. Um, and they remark how, how beautiful they all feel, and that, um, Yuya is especially, is especially glowing, so, and he, and he's kind of happy that, that, that he's more handsome than he possibly, than he thought he could, was possible. Um, Antonio merely greets him on his way out, telling him that he hopes to see them again. And also, um, Tamami and, um, and what's his name? Uh, Hazamata? Tamami and Hazamata wind up becoming kind of, not, well, not friends, I guess, but, uh, they wind up bonding over their mutual love of manga and accusing each other. So they wind up, so they wind up becoming adversaries of, uh, of, of sorts. Um, they kind of just start fighting each other. They kind of fight each other a little bit. Um, so because, because, some, because, um, Hazamata accuses Tamami of spilling juice on his favorite manga and Tamami de denies that anything ever happened. Um, speaking of which, Rohan continues to write his manga and even does a bit his warm-up exercises before he actually goes into drawing. Um, and also, as we find out, um, Miki, Mikitaka and, um, Kainadachi actually continue to hang out. So, kind of, so, kind of, so, um, Mikitaka actually decided to start keeping, um, Kainadachi company because he realizes that, that he's basically there all by himself all day, every day with only the, and doesn't really have any company. And that's, and, and considering that was one of the main reasons why he decided to try and escape his town, why he tried to do escape um his top his tower and try to trap Dosuke. Um to um uh, Mikataka decides that the best thing for him is to just kind of be there stay there and be his friend. But and, but it and but as Kanadachi rem remarks, um he, apparently uh Mikataka has a habit of actually just looking out over the town of Morio and noticing and remarking how beautiful it is. Um and wonders if there's any real reason purpose to that, but and Mikataka remarks that there is. Um, but in any case, it then proceeds to, uh, but then in any case, the series then proceeds to end with them fight, with, um, 
with um Ko Koichi Okuyasu and Josuke find hearing a rumor that um that Rohan is apparently abusing the power of his stand to actually rob a convenience store and just and while that and while Okuyasu ultimately remarks that he isn't entirely sure if there's any truth in it um the group the two, the trio then proceed to go and check it out anyway remarking that even if it is even if it isn't they might as well check it out and make sure that Rohan isn't abusing his abilities but and that's how the series ends um with with uh, with Yoshikage here dying in one of the most anticlimactic ways possible, i.e. getting run over by an ambulance, um, and everybody just kind of going about their business because they quickly real because they realized that while they that they fin while they finally got the serial killer in the end and stopped him from actually causing problems for everybody, um, at the end they weren't able they weren't able to actually punish him for his crimes because obviously no no court would ever convict him for what he did, um. And now, but now he, because of that, they, they're actually able to go about their lives and actually live a peaceful life in Morio, because, which ironically is what Yoshikage here was striving for, but now they're able to live a peaceful life in Morio without knowing that everybody is now, that all, what's left of Morio's population is now safe and no longer has to worry about a serial killer in its midst. Um, so yeah, that's how that ends. Um, um, so part four, so yeah, part four just, and just ends on that happy little note. Um, but, and obviously we get, we now get to go into part five, but, uh, before that, there's actually a series of OVAs I want to review because apparent because apparently they're on Netflix. Apparently, Netflix got the li rights to license a series of OVAs that, as far as I know, are canon to Part Four. So I got I'm going to going to try and review those on over on Netflix. But um, yeah, I'm gonna be reviewing I'm gonna be reviewing those before I get into Part Four, Part Five. So Part Five is going to wait another month or so because that's how long it takes me to review things. But uh, yeah, I will get to part five in the near future, and then we're going to get into that and hopefully be all caught up for part six whenever that anime happens. Um, so yeah, um, that's my review of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and the last one of part four. What did you guys think? Let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below or over on my Discord server, link in the description. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter in the description below to keep up to date with what's going on with the channel. I also like and retweet a lot of art, memes, and a bunch of other stuff over there, so go check that out. Um, if you And if you want to see more content from me, then be sure to check out the video linked in the end screen. The top video is the most recent video. It may or may not be this one. Whereas the bottom video is the video recommended to you based on what you've already seen from me. So if you want to see more of what you like or try something completely new, then be sure to check both of those out. I also have a Twitch. I stream every Sunday unless it's a major holiday. So go check that out if you want to. If you want to, um, we've re we recently streamed Utopia. The VOD actually went live early this morning because it was because it took a long time to process. But uh, if you guys want to go check that out, by all means, go ahead. Um, also, be sure to support me on Patreon if you want to help me with any of those. Um, I also post things on my website, so go check those out as well. Um, but in any case, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!